Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mrs. Burns, roll call, please. Mr. Parentano. Present. Mr. Allen. Present. Mrs. Bowman. Here. Ms. Boyle. Uh, here. Mrs. Hallenbach. Here. Mr. Kovitz. Here. Mr. Marrington. Here. Mr. Cirillo. Here. And Mr. Sullivan. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mrs. Burns. Please stand for a Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. This is the uh, public board meeting, August 18th at Maple Point Auditorium. Our executive session statement, the board met in executive session this evening prior to this meeting to discuss matters of employment, issues related to labor relations, the purchase or lease of real property, matters related to litigation and or matters related to school safety and security. Mrs. Burns, any announcements? Um, no announcements. Thank you, Mrs. Burns. Uh, Dr. McGee, superintendent's report, please. Thank you, Mr. Parentana. Uh, first, I'd like to review the enrollment, uh, uh, the, the enrollment report found in board docs. Uh, there are just under 9,400 students enrolled in the Chamonix as of the most recent enrollment report. 57 in our virtual academy and 317 in our technical school, not included in that 9,400. We have the smallest graduating class starting this year, under 600, yet one of the largest freshman classes entering over 700. Also following up large classes are the eighth and seventh grade in our middle schools pushing 800, just under 800. So that's our enrollment report. Some updates and to answer some frequently asked, asked, uh, asked questions about reopening. We have a new hotline uh, for reopening. Mrs. Trish Murray is manning that hot hotline to answer your questions. Uh, the number is in today's email, but if you're listening, it's 215-809-8777, or you can email Mrs. Murray at questions at .org. She knows just about everything about Nishamini, and if she doesn't, she will find it out. We're going to pause the meeting for technical difficulties. All right, I'll continue. All right, and now that our technical difficulties have been resolved, we're going to continue the meeting. Go ahead, Dr. McGee. Uh, there seems to be some confusion out there about the idea of synchronous learning versus asynchronous learning. So uh, some uh, analogies or links to more common things. Think of synchronous learning as a Zoom meeting. Uh, think of asynchronous learning as learning on Canvas. Now, that didn't help a whole lot of people, so let me try something else. Think about synchronous learning as FaceTiming, whereas asynchronous learning is Facebook. And think about synchronous as live TV, where asynchronous is on demand. So that should help. Uh, there has been a great demand for more asynchronous opportunities face-to-face -face via the computer. We're going to build them in. But also there is the increasing concern of families that they can't, their children can't go through that type of rigor during the day uh, to be period by period in a particular spot for obligations of the family. So we now are searching for both synchronous options and alternatives to those synchronous options for those who can't access that. So more information on that will be coming. Student devices, one of the biggest frequently asked questions. Our IT department is ready to go. Uh, all students will have an individual device at the start of school this year. All right, we have 2,000 Chromebooks on order. Uh, that order probably compares, uh, pales to uh, other districts in the nation. So we don't believe we're gonna get that by the start of school, but we will get that eventually. Our kindergartners, in the meantime, while we wait for their Chromebooks, we'll get iPads uh, from the classrooms. Our fifth graders are slated to get an upgrade to a new Chromebook. Um, and all that information will be coming out, an email tomorrow from Mrs. 
Burkholder, and the IT department will do their normal outstanding job the week of August 14th through September 3rd, distributing this technology to families. And finally, uh, the idea of orientation days in September. The goal of September is to prepare us to get back to school in a hybrid model in October. That's, that is really the goal. Bring kids in a half a grade at a time, work with their teachers, work with the entire staff to make sure they know what to do, and hopefully, uh, virus permitting, conditions permitting, we can move to the blue-red hybrid in, in October. I think the choice of the word orientation may, may not have been the best choice on, on, on my part. That day is a full school, school day where uh, half of the grade comes in. If, if parents permit, they're welcome to come in. Uh, if parents choose, they can keep them at home. They can ride the school bus. They'll experience the new entry procedures. Uh, they'll experience the new moving between class procedures. They'll experience each of their teachers that they would see that, that day, the new lunch procedures, all the new procedures, including the new exit procedures. So the idea of student orientation day is a full day of school, parents, parents permitting, uh, to get them orientated to, one, what their new class is, who their new teachers are, and what some of the new procedures are. Uh, so again, I don't know if you heard it before the audio kicked out. For questions, we have Mrs. Trish Murray uh, answering a hotline at 215-809-8777. Mrs. Murray will ha happily uh, answer your questions about reopening, and if she doesn't know the answer, she will find the answer. And Trish and Mr. Stanley will be developing a uh, frequently asked question list that will populate on the website shortly. That's the superintendent's report, Mr. Parentana. Thank you very much, Dr. McGee. This brings us to our first public comment period. You can approach the podium. Is, do we have a uh, call-in sheet? Uh, yeah, Jay Sarajan. Not, you want to wait to the second period? That's perfectly fine. That was it. That was the only sign up. Is there anyone here otherwise that would wish to speak during public comment? Seeing none, we're going to move the agenda on. Brings us to section two. I'd like to make a master motion for agenda items 2.01. Two uh, minutes, 2.02, treasurer's report, 2.03, check register and procurement card purchases, 2.04, investments, and 2.05, exonerations. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Hollenbeck. Any comments, questions, or concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes nine to zero. Brings us to section three. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, please. I'd like to make a master motion to approve item 3.01, leaves of absence, 3.02, revised return some leave, and 3.03, .03, appointments. Thank you. A motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes nine to zero. Mr. Sullivan. 3.04, co-curricular appointments. Resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the following co-curricular appointments for certified staff subject to the following conditions. In the event the activity is canceled for any reason, including acts of God or pursuant to an order by the governor of Pennsylvania, Secretary of Health, prior to the commencement, the coach advisor will receive no compensation and or in the event the activity has commenced and then canceled for any reason, reason including acts of God or pursuant to an order by the governor of Pennsylvania, Secretary of Health, the coach advisor shall receive pro rata compensation for the period of services rendered. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Motion's been made. May we have a second? Second. Second, second by Mrs. Bowman. Any comments, questions, or concerns? I just want to verify 
It says for any reason, including, that's just some examples of what the reasons are. It could be any other reason related to the pandemic or anything else. Is that correct? That is, cor that is correct, Ms. Hollenbeck. And uh, just for the, the, uh, for the public at home that may be watching, this particular uh, resolution includes a list of 85 persons. Any more questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes nine to zero. Mr. Sullivan. 3.05 ancillary appointments. Resolved that the Chamonix Board of School Directors hereby approves the following ancillary appointments for certified staff subject to the following conditions. In the event the activity is canceled for any reason, including acts of God, or pursuant to an order by the Governor of Pennsylvania's Secretary of Health, prior to the commencement, the coach advisor will receive no compensation and or, in the event the activity is commenced and then canceled for any reason, including acts of God, or pursuant to an order by the Governor or Pennsylvania Secretary of Health, the coach advisor shall receive pro rata compensation for the period of services rendered. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Motions been made. May I have a second? That is Irene. Irene. Uh, second by Mrs. Boyle. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Uh, this list includes 47 people. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Brings us to section 4.1. Mrs. Hollenbach, please. I'd like to make a motion for personal support uh, 4.1 NESPA Article 7, Section 5-1, Wage Adjustments. Whereas the Neshaminy School District has a collective bargaining agreement with the Neshaminy Education Support Professionals Association through June 30th, 2022, and whereas Article 7, Section 5-1 of the agreement permits the association and the district to put forth committees to discuss possible wage discrepancies based on market conditions. And whereas the committees for the district and the association have met to discuss the need for wage increases to non-grandfathered employees to attract and retain qualified employees in the area of bus driver, van drivers, and certain skilled laborers. And whereas the district committee has recommended increases to these employee groups now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the committee's recommendation that the following wage increases be approved as followed. Thank you, Mrs. Hollenbach. A motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any comments, questions, or concerns? I just wanted to specify that there are 11 classifications of salaries that we are recommending to increase in this category. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hollenbach. Any additional comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes nine to zero. Mrs. Hollenbach. I'd like to make a master motion to approve 4.02, retirements, resignations, and of assignments. 4.03, leaves of absence, 4.04, revised leaves of absence, and 4.05, appointments. Thank you, Ms. Hollenbach. Motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Aye. Paul, Paul was it? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm looking the wrong way. The, the sound really bounces around up here. It's difficult. <laughs> second by Ms. Mr. Cirillo. Any comments? Questions or concerns? I would just like to take an opportunity to note that there are three employees, Daniel Hewitt, with 28 years of service, Charles Moser with 30 years of service, and a uh, Michael Sheridan with 32 years of service that will be leaving the Chamonix. We want to thank you for all the dedication that you've had to the Chamonix and its students over the years. Any additional comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mr. Kovics, please. Resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the following co-curricular appointments for support staff subject to the following conditions. In the event the activity is canceled for any reason, including acts of God or pursuant to an order by the governor of Pencil or Pennsylvania Secretary of Health prior to the commencement, the coach advisor will receive no compensation and or in the event the activity has commenced and then canceled for any reason, including acts of God or pursuant to an order by the governor or Pennsylvania Secretary of Health, the coach advisor shall receive pro rata conf compensation for the period of services rendered. Thank you, Mr. Kovacs. A motion has been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Hollenbeck. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Uh, just for the uh, public watching at home, this particular list includes uh, 27 people. Any additional comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mr. Kovitz, please. Resolved that the Shamney Board of School Directors hereby approves the following ancillary appointments for support staff subject to the following conditions. In the event the activity is canceled for any reason, including acts of God or pursuant to an order by the governor or Pennsylvania Secretary of Health prior to the commencement, the coach advisor will receive no compensation and or in the event the activity has commenced and then canceled for any reason, including the acts of God or pursuant to an order by the governor or Pennsylvania Secretary of Health, the coach advisor shall receive pro rata compensation for the period of services rendered. Thank you, Mr. Kovitz. A motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Uh, this list includes 12 people. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes 9 to 0. Brings us to Section 5, 5.01. Mrs. Bowman, please. 5.01, Title I, Planning, and Appro uh, planning Approval. Whereas the following Neshaminy schools have been identified as Title I schools, Albert Schweitzer Elementary School, Herbert Hoover Elementary School, Joseph E. Ferdebar Elementary School, Tawanka Elementary School, and Walter Miller Elementary School. Whereas each school has developed a school improvement plan based upon a thorough review of the essential practices to advance educational programs and processes and improve student achievement. Whereas the action plans that we will be implementing address our specific school needs, including strategies that provide educational opportunities and instructional strategies for all students, and each of the student groups increases the amount and quality of learning time and provides equity in the curriculum, which may include programs, activities, and courses necessary to provide a well-rounded education. These plans address the needs of all children in the school, but particularly the needs of those at risk and not meeting the challenges, challenging state academic standards. Whereas the school level plans has been duly reviewed by the building administrator, superintendent of schools, and will be formally approved by the district's board of education per guidelines required by the Pennsylvania Department of Education. And whereas, the school level plans addresses all the required components prescribed by the Pennsylvania Department of Education, meets ESSA requirements, reflects evidence-based strategies that meet the three highest levels of evidence outlined in ESSA, has a high probability of improving student achievement, has sufficient LEA leadership and support to ensure successful implementation. Now therefore be it resolved that we, the Pennsylvania Department of Education grant formal approval to implement this school level plans. 
Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. The motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any comments, questions, or concerns on this item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. 5.02, uh, Mr. Marrington, would you please? 5.02, pandemic, emergency, instructional time. Whereas the Neshaminy Board of School Director previously approved an emergency pandemic declaration, now therefore be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the attached emergency instructional time template as per section 520.1 for the 2020-2021 school year. Thank you, Mr. Marrington. A motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any comments, questions, or concerns on this item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mrs. Boyle, would you please read 5.03? Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve 5.03, revised 2020-2021 school calendar, whereas <clears throat> uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has forced a delay in the first day of school. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the attached revised school calendar with the first day of school for students as September 8th. Thank you, Mrs. Boyle. Motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bowman. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mrs. Boyle, would you please read 504? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve 5.04. Flexible instructional day application uh, to PDE. <clears throat> Whereas the Pennsylvania Department of Education permits districts to designate flexible instructional days. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the attached flexible instructional days, FID, application for 2021 20, 20, 20, 20, and two subsequent years to be submitted to the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Thank you, Mrs. Boyle. A motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any comments, <coughs> questions, or concerns on this item? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. <clears throat> Mrs. Boyle, 5.05, .05, please. Okay. Let's make a motion to approve 5.05 out of district placements. Whereas in order to meet the educational programming needs of specific students, it may be advantageous to utilize the services of out of district providers. Now therefore be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves the out of district placements identified below. Thank you, Mrs. Boyle. Motion's been made, may I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sullivan. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Mr. Allen, would you please read 6.01? Thank you, Mr. Veritano. I'd like to bring a motion to the table 6.01 stipulation and license agreement between Lower Southampton Township and the Bucks County Intermediate Unit. Whereas the Neshaminy Board of School Directors, school district, have an existing lease agreement dated August 16th, 2016, as amended with the Bucks County Intermediate Unit number 22, IU, for their use of the Lower Southampton Elementary School, located at seven school lane, Lower Southampton Township, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and whereas Lower Southampton Township held a hearing on the IU application and waiver requests 
on September 27, 2017, in connection with a preliminary and final land development plan filed with the township on January 4, 2017, to provide additional parking whereas uh, areas to serve the educational programs by the IU. And whereas the Lower Southampton Township Zoning Hearing Board, here and after the Zoning Board, conducted a hearing on August 15, 2017, pursuant to the IU application for zoning variances, including an interpretation appeal and also variances requiring direct access to an arterial or collector street, Bridgetown Pike, and forego the installation of electronic vehicle charging stations. And whereas the zoning board did on September 29th, 2017, deny all variance relief, which was subsequently appealed to the Court of Common Pleas of Bucks County, docket number 2017-0730625 by the IU on October 26, 2017. And whereas the Township Board of Supervisors denied the application for preliminary and final land development approval and requested waivers on September 27, 2017. When whereas on or about November 13, 2017, the IU appealed the Township's denial of preliminary and final land development, along with the requested waivers to the Bucks County Court of Common Pleas, docket number 2017, 06946-40, and whereas the school district intervened in these matters on November 17, 2017, and whereas the parties, in the interest of avoiding further litigation, wish to resolve the two pending matters pursuant to the stipulation and settlement agreement presented this evening, and whereas part of the stipulation and agreement resolving the litigation the township and the school district wish to enter into a license agreement for the township's use of the existing directional sign located on the property at the corner of Bridgetown Pike and School Lane. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors approves the attached stipulation and license agreement conditioned upon Lower Southampton Township, the Lower Southampton Township Zoning Hearing Board, and Bucks County Intermediate Unit number 22, approving same at their next respective board meeting, and authorizes the board president and secretary to execute both the license agreement and stipulation in the form presented at the meeting. And the board, secretar uh, board president, secretary, solicitor, and other officers of the school district are authorized to take all action required to effectuate the license agreement and stipulation. Thank you very much, Mr. Allen. You did quite well. A motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cirillo, was that? Yep. That's by Mr. Cirillo. Any comments, questions, or concerns? At this time, I would just ask the solicitor if he could just make some uh, comment about the mutual nature of this agreement uh, rather than the legalese form that it's, that it's presented in to the yes. public. Thank you, Mr. Piritano. This is a matter or a stipulation that involves two uh, pieces of litigation involving Lower Southampton Elementary School uh, regarding improvements that were proposed uh, by the uh, Bucks County Intermediate Unit uh, for that building. Uh, and essentially what it does is it approves a, um, an agreement to develop the property to provide a connector driveway to the rear of the uh, elementary school connecting uh, the two parking lots, uh, which will be uh, improved in themselves and provide additional parking to the, uh, to the school to alleviate uh, some of the traffic concerns at that site. Uh, the second component of the uh, agreement is a, a license agreement for a directional sign that the district is providing uh, to uh, the township. Um, uh, for the continued use of that sign. So. Thank you, Mr. Torrente. Any additional comments, questions, or concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. 
Mr. Allen, please, 6.02. Okay, Mr. Bertano. I'd like to bring a motion to the table, 6.02, fourth addendum to lease agreement, HVAC renovations at LST BCIU. <laughs> Whereas the Neshaminy Board of School Directors have an existing lease agreement dated August 16, 2016 with the Bucks County Intermediate Unit number 22 for their use of the Lower Southampton Elementary School located at 7 School Lane, Lower Southampton Township, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And whereas lesser and lessee entered into an addendum to lease agreement dated April 24th 2018 to extend the time period allowed to replace the HVAC system and associated electrical service upgrades to June 3rd, 30th, 2019. And whereas lesser and lessee entered into a second addendum to lease agreement dated January 22nd, 2019 to allow for the incorporation of a guaranteed energy savings act project in support of the HVAC system replacement and another extension of the timeline to complete the improvements to December 31st, 2019. And whereas Lessor and Lessee entered into a third addendum to lease agreement dated September 17th, 2019 for a six year extension of the existing lease from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2029. Revising the indemnification clauses and a new extension of the GISA HVAC project time period to August 31st, 2020. And whereas lesser and lessee are now amendable to an additional extension of the GISA HVAC project time period to December 31st, 2020, in order for the lessee to complete the required lease upgrades, which are currently under construction. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors approves the attached fourth amendment to the lease to be incorporated with the existing lease agreement and prior addenda, collectively lease, and authorizes the board president and secretary to execute the fourth addendum in the form presented at the meeting and the board president, secretary, solicitor, and other officers of the school district are authorized to take all action required to effectuate this motion and fourth addendum and lease. Thank you again, Mr. Allen. Motion's been made. May I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cirillo. Any comments, questions, or concerns? At this time, I would once again ask our solicitor to uh, try and relieve the legalese and, and explain it in a more uh, common sense manner, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Piritano. Essentially, what this addendum to the uh, lease agreement is doing is providing an additional um, time period for the IU to complete the uh, renovation uh, work to the interior of the uh, facility, um, having to do with um, various improvements, including the HVAC renovations required under the lease. Um, it's extending that time period to the end of the year, which is December 31, uh, 2020. And this is for the IU funded Giza project at Lower Southampton only? That's correct, Mr. Piritano. Right. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> Motion passes 9 to 0. That will bring us to 6.03. Mr. Cirillo, please. I'd like to make a motion for 6.03 settlement agreements, whereas the Neshaminy School District has outlined a private and confidential agreement with the families of student number 781704, 794457, and 790446. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby approves providing for the educational programming as specified in said agreement. Thank you, Mr. Cirillo. Motion's been made. May we have a second, please? Second. Second, 
Second by Mr. Kovitz. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Brings us to 6.04. Mrs. Hollenbach, please. 6.04, Act 75, Tax Resolution. Whereas Act 75 of 2020 permits school districts that impose taxes on the assessed value of real property to provide relief to taxpayers. And whereas the Chamonix School District has determined that it is in the best interest of the district, its residents and taxpayers for the district to provide relief to those paying taxes on the assessed value of real property located within the district. And now therefore be it resolved that in the Chamonix School District hereby waives any fees or penalties associated with the late payment of the tax imposed on the assessed value of real estate provided that the real estate tax is paid in its entirety by December 31st, 2020. Be it further resolved that the business administrator of the Chamonix School District shall immediately deliver a copy of this resolution to the township's tax collector in each municipality in the Chamonix School District serves. Thank you, Ms. Hollenbeck. A uh, motion's been made. May I have a second, please? Second. second by Mrs. Boyle. Any comments, questions, or concerns? At this time, you know, I would like to entertain discussion on this motion. Um, I would like to make an amendment to the resolution uh, that would ex also extend the 2% uh, discount period from uh, August 31st, 2020 to September 30th, 2020. I believe uh, in talking to some local businesses that have, have just been able to get back up and running in July that would normally be able to take advantage uh, of uh, the discount period uh, and as well as some you know, homeowners as well uh, that may need some extra time to, to generate income for those payments that uh, a little bit additional grace period uh, you know, is a proper thing to do. And I don't believe, you know, such an impact uh, would be detrimental to the finances of the district. Uh, I would ask our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, our business manager if he could provide any additional comment on my amendment. Uh, the district's uh, tax revenues for the fiscal year, current fiscal year, uh, for the month of July are actually ahead of schedule. Uh, which is very surprising. Um, the I think the discount extended discount period would not have a, any effect whatsoever on the district's finances for the year. Uh, they'd be very minimal, and uh, I think it's a good idea for the for the board to consider that amendment um, to provide some relief during this pandemic. There are a lot of areas out there of people who are struggling at this time, um, so I, I, I'm in favor of the of the resolution. Thank you for that. Thank you for the comment, Mr. Torrente. Um, if the board was to enter entertain my amendment uh, to the resolution, how, how will we proceed? You would need to, uh, someone would need to make a motion to amend the Act 75 uh, tax resolution to include an extension of the discount rate of 2% through September 30th, 2020. You would need to call a vote on that amendment and then take a vote on the original resolution as amended. So there'll be two votes. Thank you. So it would be proper for me to make that, 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 a, um, that motion. That's correct. At this time, I would like to make a motion to amend item 6.04, Act 75, tax resolution, to include, to allow that the 2% discount period be extended from August 31st, 2020, to September 30th, 2020. A motion's been made. I'd ask for a second. Second. Second by Mrs. Bowman. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Amendment passes 9 to 0. Having a, a motion on 6.04 and now having a second uh, by Mrs. Boyle. I would like to call for any comments, additional comments, questions, or concerns on that item. 
Hearing none, I'd like to have a vote. All in favor to pass 6.04, including Pierce, the- Mr. Pearson, I'll yes? be a, a vote on the motion as amended. I'm sorry. Okay. I'd like to call for a vote on the motion as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 9 to 0. Thank you all for entertaining that amendment. That brings us to the uh, other board business. Does any board member have any other board business to discuss? Hearing none, we will move to our second session of public comment. Anyone wishing to speak, please approach the podium. You have three minutes. Please state your name. Please spell your last name for the board secretary, the area in which you live, your occupation, and please no personal attacks. Good evening, school board members and superintendent. Uh, my name is Jay Saragin. I live at 1409 Poplar Road, Feasterville. Uh, I'm a retired Lieutenant Colonel U.S. Army and retired uh, instrument technician and engineer. Um, I have found in the military that the notion, if you're not part of the solution, don't become part of the problem. This application of UV sanitization has been around since 1941, where it was first installed in some Philadelphia schools to curb the spread of measles. Buildings that had the UV fixtures installed ran about 15% of the students becoming sick. Those buildings that didn't have the UV fixtures installed ran about 50% of the students becoming sick. This is back in 1941. Present technology recommends, and most important, is installing the UV GI lights in the HVAC duct system in front of the existing filters in order to kill any virus or bacteria that's trapped in the filters and preventing the viruses from becoming recirculated back to the classrooms. A typical example of what happened just a few years ago with uh, Legionnaire's disease. We made the situation worse. Right? This takes care of the most important uh, situation, and that is putting the lights in front of the filters. The second and almost important is to install a type, some type of ionizing unit on the discharge side of the HVAC system to create enough ozone to kill bacteria and virus on contact in the student's classroom. That means on the desks, on the person's clothing, um, because early units cause some medical issues, the present protocol is to limit the ozone concentration to less than one part per million. Several technologies exist to create this ion exchange. I personally prefer the air scrubber by Aris, which is model number 9960051, which is one of the most popular units being installed in our area today. Installation of both of these options would make Neshaminy schools part of the solution. Are there any questions? This isn't a question and answer period. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would wish to approach the podium for public comment? Seeing none, we'll move over to a board comment. Uh, Mrs. Bowman, would you like to make any commentary? I just want to thank uh, Dr. McGee and all the administration for all your hard work and efforts in getting our schools up and running by November, by September 8th. Um, and just thank you for all your hard work. Uh, it's really, um, uh, it's been around the clock and effortless and tireless and you've been doing a great job and I just wanted to recognize everything that you're doing so thank you and I hope everybody 
enjoys the rest of their summer. Thank you. Mrs. Boyle, would you like to make any commentary? Um, I just want to, want to also thank uh, Dr. McGee and all the administration uh, for, for all, their, all their hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Hollenbeck? I don't have any comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kovitz? I'd just like to mirror uh, uh, both uh, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Boyle's Ms. Bowman's uh, uh, words. Uh, I think uh, this has been a really long haul, and uh, we got a lot accomplished this evening. I'm very proud of that. And uh, um, and, and again, uh, to all those parents that have spoken out, uh, I know we had a lot of people last meeting that we had um, that spoke out. Um, I know that there are a lot of people that are that, that while there are many people who are doing okay during this time, there are those that are suffering, and uh, uh, I think it's important that we remain mindful of that. And I believe we've done we've we've made several attempts to do that this evening, and uh, hopefully that that will continue forward. Uh, we we're, we're we're trying to take care of our own, and we're trying to take care of everyone as best as we can. We know that uh, no situation. Uh, during this time is going to be ideal, but we're going to give it the best we have to uh, make sure that every student uh, gets the best education that they can and we can accommodate as many parent schedules out there as possible. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kovitz. Mr. Marrington. Uh, yes, I'd also like to, uh, to thank Dr. McGee and, and the, the entire administration and, of, of Neshaminy. Um, you know, for his tireless efforts, and I, I, you know, we get emails that are, you know, really long and humorous and, and, and pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, and, and much of this, much of what's happening here has been very innovative and, and also, uh, um, I think, for the betterment of Neshaminy. And, and it's, a lot of it's behind the scenes. And uh, so I'd like to thank everybody for this. I, I uh, you know, I do have the opportunity just in what I do to talk to people from, from quite a few other school districts, and they're all saying, how come we're not doing what Neshaminy's doing? Uh, and that's, that's become a pretty common refrain for the people that I know. Uh, so again, thank you, and, and uh, let's make this thing work. We're gonna make it work. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cirillo. No, just wanna thank Dr. McGee and his, uh, all the staff uh, for all the hard work they continue to do to uh, open the schools up as uh, soon as possible. Thank you. Th thank you. Uh, Mr. Sullivan? I'll pass on comment tonight. Okay. Now, at one of these meetings, I'm going to get this right. We generally want Dr. McGee to go first, but I keep forgetting. So at this opportunity, uh, Dr. McGee, if you have any comments, you can make to the public. Also, if you could take a moment to include in your comments uh, some recent emails we got from uh, swim parents concerning our pools? Sure. Uh, first, uh, I need better glasses. I gave out the uh, question hotline number, the wrong number, 215-809-7777. Uh, I think I misread that previously. Um, number of concerns about the opening of our pools. Uh, presently, our facilities aren't open to any indoor activities, both for our own students, our sports teams, uh, and our and the outside community with the exception of in-season athletes and presently that is for the most part outside except for our volleyball team uh, possibly the band going in the building to get their stuff and then a limited number of students in the football weight room uh, so at some point uh, we will reopen our uh, our indoor facilities right now the goal is to get ready for our staff to come back uh, then the students come back and adding more people to our facilities just adds more for us to do as far as cleaning and take care of, taking care of things. Um, so at some point it has to happen, uh, assuming the, uh, the incidence of the virus stays, stays, stays low and, and we're ready to, uh, to bring things back. Uh, that point can be sooner, sooner or later. Uh, it's a matter of if we open it for one activity, uh, we have to open it for the basketball teams, the batting cages, et cetera. Uh, and if we open it for one community organization, we're obligated to open it for all. So it's, uh, it's really not just a swimming thing. It's more of a, uh, our facilities are not open with the exception of outside facilities. 
or to in-season athletes uh, at, that, at, at the moment. So we've denied access to our basketball players, to our gym, we've denied access to our che che cheerleaders, to our gym. Uh, and I think it's coming the time where we, we need to consider reopening that. So uh, probably sooner than later, we need to make sure that we're prepared for the, that additional traffic within our facilities as we prepare to open. And could you also elaborate on, uh, I had gotten one question uh, from, from a resident referring to the health and safety plan status and, and the difference between uh, each grouping of health and safety plans? Yeah, so on uh, the last meeting, August 12th, the board approved the reopening of school health and safety plan to bring the general population back. Back at the end of June, at that last meeting, the board approved, uh, we called it the athletic, athletic and co-curricular plan to b begin to bring um, voluntary workouts and then our August, um, August start dates back. So they are two separate plans uh, as far as what procedures are need, are need, need to be done. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Uh, and if I could make one more. Yes, please do. So I just, uh, 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 the board seems to be thanking me and the administrative team a lot. Um, I'd like to thank you for your support, but also behind the administrative team are dozens of, uh, of other people, support staff, cer certified staff, two labor or organizations who have worked with us. And uh, I honestly cannot wait to get back the 600 teachers and the other 500 support staff members because they're the ones that are really gonna make this work. Uh, so uh, I, we, we appreciate your support, but uh, it's really the team behind it because uh, what happens in an individual school, in an individual classroom, in this particular end of the building at this hallway comes down to the folks that work there. Uh, so that's, that's really where it's going to happen, and, uh, and, and, they, and they are part of the team as well. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Uh, bring us to Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Rotano. Um, yes, I, uh, I would repeat what everyone else has said. Uh, uh, the administration, Dr. McGee, you've been doing a fantastic job. Um, and, and I'd like to just echo what everyone else has said. We, it's greatly appreciated. Um, the humor also, it's been a tough, <laughs> been a tough cu couple months for all of us. And the fact that we can all do our best and keep humor about it, um, I, I think speaks well of our community and, uh, it's much appreciated. I just want to take a couple minutes, uh, brief minutes to address the, uh, the gentleman who came and talked about the ultraviolet light and our, the ionization, uh, bipolar ionization, we are investigating that still. Um, sorry. And uh, that is part of our, uh, our plans, hopefully going forward. Um, at the moment, we have, uh, I spoke to this our last meeting, uh, I got some feedback that I wasn't clear on <laughs> some of my, my comments. Um, what I had said is that we are in the process of upgrading our filtration system. We uh, had uh, what's called MERV. What MERV means, maximum efficiency reporting value. That's kind of just means the larger the number, the tighter the weave, the more dirt it takes out. That's what it means. Um, so we're going from a nine to a 13. It's not quite into the HEPA range. Uh, that would create a lot of back pressure on our systems. Um, so 13 is a significant change without overburdening our, uh, the fans and, and all that, because uh, the, the building's systems are balanced. If you increase resistance, you increase dry, uh, amperage on the motors, there's things you have to adjust. Um, this is within range of our, our equipment and won't be a big problem. Uh, we'll also be increasing, introducing more outdoor air, uh, and, and where available, we also can control our exhaust. So again, keeping the building in a balance and bringing, introducing quote unquote cleaner air from the out side so we're recirculating less even though they are all going through the same filtration process and we are as i said we are investigating including ultraviolet and the bipolar ionization uh, addition that's an enhancement to our system um, 
and uh, th oh, and by increasing outside air and the exhaust, that increases air changes uh, within the building. Uh, all positive for our uh, or you know the, under this situation. Um, we're doing oh yes i'm sorry what i meant to say is we're doing that regardless of whether we go forward with the uv and bipolar all right that's it i, I may have muddied the waters even more i don't know i'm sorry i, I tend to i understand that i assume everybody else does i i apologize um and that's all i have this evening thank you thank you um i don't want to jump on all the accolades that have been given to dr mcgee uh, and his staff and the entire Nishamity staff. As I spoke last meeting, this is an all-in effort. Uh, every person that's associated with this district, the role is important and is going to be required for us to successfully return our children to school. A lot of emails that I've received have been about what it is going to take for children to return to the classroom. And there's uh, basically three basic steps. When the administration informs this board that we have met our in-school health and safety plan and that we have the adequate staffing secured and the incident rate in our area, according to the Bucks County Department of Health, is in the low threshold that will allow in-school, this board will take up a vote, not one day sooner, not one day later, uh, to return our children to the classroom. We will only do it under those conditions. So while the area seems to be making great progress, uh, we're staying very low in our incident rates. Um, we need our, those materials we're missing for a health and safety plan, and we did significant uh, staffing uh, this evening and, and tonight's agenda. Uh, we still need more to go, uh, but we're in a lot better shape than a lot of other districts. And at this particular point in time, I feel very confident on the timetable that, that Dr. McGee has laid out. And I would hope that everybody will just stay patient and please keep, us, keep yourselves informed by looking at the information that Dr. McGee has available and is constantly posting on the, on the website. I would ask that, that you start to take advantage of the new contact and question numbers so Dr. McGee cannot have to answer 400 emails every day, uh, but I again applaud him for the effort that he goes to to, to help everyone be, uh, be informed. Um, the uh, only other uh, issue um, that came up in concerns, and we are talking uh, with the the administration uh, regarding uh, what happens if we don't go back to school. Uh, it is the intention of this board, as it was prior. Uh, to keep the Chamonix fully staffed uh, to the point where it's no longer feasible. We did that in the, uh, during the, uh, uh, the springtime. It's the intention of this board to continue to do that. Uh, we don't want to see anyone laid off, anyone furloughed. If we can avoid it, uh, we're going to avoid it. But there is a possibility that there may come a point in time, depending upon which way this goes, uh, that we may not be able to keep that that hope alive. But right now, the board wants to stand by our employees. They dedicated their, themselves in the Chamonix. They dedicated themselves to be here and to come back to school. And we want you to know that we're here supporting you as well. So in saying that, uh, I did one last thing. I did get some questions regarding uh, Catholic schools or private schooling and bus support. Um, the district is, is formulating that now, and, and very shortly we should be able to uh, release some information as far as the uh, private school uh, busing arrangements go. So um, just uh, everybody stay safe. Uh, thank you all for uh, participating, and uh, Nishamini will we'll get through this, and we'll make it happen, and our kids are going to get back in class. So saying that... I'd like to call for adjournment. Motion's been made. Second, Second by Mrs. Hollenbeck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. 9-0. Good evening, everyone.